This video is about radian angle measure. This is AP Precalculus Topic 3.2. If you appreciate this content, please give it a like. In a previous video, we learned that an angle is in standard position when the vertex is at the origin and one ray is on the positive x-axis. The other ray is called the terminal ray of the angle. In precalculus, we work with positive and negative angles. The positive or negative indicates the direction of the rotation from the positive x-axis. A counterclockwise rotation from the positive x-axis is a positive angle like this one. A negative angle like this one means a clockwise rotation from the positive x-axis. Since we are using the coordinate plane to define angles, we can consider angles to have periodic behavior. Angles in standard position that share a terminal ray differ by an integer number of revolutions. For example, consider this blue angle in standard position. The terminal side is rotated from the positive x-axis counterclockwise just like this. Compare the blue angle to this red angle, also in standard position, which has the same terminal side. However, this red angle is going to turn out to be much bigger than the blue angle. That's because we arrive at the terminal side by rotating from the positive x-axis counterclockwise, but this time we are rotating all the way around past the positive x-axis and then finally arriving at this terminal side. The way we measure angles in higher level math may seem a little bit strange at first, but you get used to it. Another thing that is strange about the way we measure angles in pre-calculus is that we are not going to use degrees like you learned in geometry. The radian measure of an angle is equal to the arc length divided by the radius. Remember that the circumference of a circle is given by c equals 2 pi r. We can find the arc length by considering a ratio of the circle's circumference. Example 1. Consider the angle theta created by the quarter circle of radius 4 above. Find the measure of angle theta in radians. Remember that in radians, the measure of angle theta will equal the arc length divided by the radius. We know the radius is 4, so all we need is the arc length. Let's let L equal the arc length, so we don't have to keep writing the words arc length over and over again. So this formula will become theta in radians is equal to the arc length L divided by the radius. Let's call that R. This arc is one-fourth of the circle. So L is one-fourth of the circumference of the whole circle. In other words, L is equal to one-fourth of 2 pi R. But we know the radius is 4. So this becomes L is equal to one-fourth of 2 pi times 4. So L is equal to one-fourth of 8 pi and 8 divided by 4 is 2, so L is equal to 2 pi. Our goal is to find the measure of theta in radians. We know that theta in radians is given by the arc length over the radius, L over R. So that's 2 pi over 4, which reduces to pi over 2. So, theta is equal to pi over 2 radians. This is a really common angle in trigonometry, so I want you to memorize this. What we used to think of as 90 degrees in geometry class, we will now think of as pi over 2 radians. For example 2, let's find the measure of the angle formed by a third of a circle with radius 3 centered at the origin in clockwise rotation. Let's continue to let L equal the arc length. This time the arc length will be one-third 
of the circumference. So L is equal to one-third of 2 pi r. But we know that the radius is 3. So let's go ahead and just substitute that in very quickly. So this becomes L is equal to one-third of 6 pi. This simplifies to 2 pi. So L is equal to 2 pi. Be careful. Because the rotation is clockwise, theta will be a negative radian measure. So let's say negative L over R. So theta will equal negative 2 pi over 3. The radian measure of the angle described is negative 2 pi over 3 radians. The unit circle is a tool used for trigonometry in higher level math. The unit circle is just a circle centered at the origin that has a radius of 1. The radian measure of an angle is the arc length divided by the radius, but on a unit circle the radius is always 1. So our formula for radian measure becomes arc length over 1. In other words, on the unit circle the radian measure of an angle is equal to the arc length. Example 3. For each of the following, sketch a picture of the arc length described based on a unit circle. Then find the measure of the angle corresponding to the given arc length. Part A. One-sixth of a circle in the counterclockwise direction. Counterclockwise means the radian measure will be positive. Here's a picture of the arc length described. This arc length is one-sixth of the circumference, so one-sixth two pi r. But wait a minute, this is a unit circle, so r is one. We didn't even really need to write the one. So the arc length is one-sixth of two pi. This is uh, two pi over six, which reduces down to pi over 3. Remember that on the unit circle the arc length and the angle measure are the same. So the angle measure is also pi over 3. Here's a picture of two full revolutions in the clockwise direction. Because it is clockwise the angle measure is negative. In this case the arc length L will be double the circumference, so 2 times 2 pi r with a radius of 1. So the arc length will equal 4 pi. And on the unit circle, the angle measure in radians is equal to the arc length, so theta is equal to 4 pi. Or rather, negative 4 pi radians because of the clockwise rotation. Part C. Here's a picture of three quarters of a circle rotating in the counterclockwise direction. The counterclockwise direction means that the radian measure will be positive. In this case, the arc length will be three fourths of the circumference. This is six pi over four, which reduces down to three pi over two. On the unit circle, arc length equals the radian angle measure, so theta equals 3 pi over 2 radians. Part D. Here's a sketch of 7 eighths of a circle in a counterclockwise direction, so the angle measure will end up as a positive number. In this case, the arc length L will be 7 eighths of the circumference, so that's 7 eighths times 2 pi r, 2 pi times 1. This is 14 pi over 8, which reduces to 7 pi over 4. Therefore, the angle measure is 7 pi over 4 radians. Example 4. The circle above has markings at the important angles that will be used repeatedly throughout this course. The radian measures in the first quadrant are given for the circle. 
Use these angles and symmetry to complete the remaining labeled angles on the circle. I'm going to go from bigger angles down to smaller angles. Let's start with the angles formerly known as 90 degrees. This is pi over 2. You can think of this as 1 pi over 2 as we count the multiples of this angle. So if this is 1 pi over 2, then if I land here, now I have gone 2 pi over 2. But obviously 2 pi over 2 reduces down to simply pi. Now if I go another pi over 2, now I have gone 3 pi over 2. And if I go one more pi over 2, now I have gone 4 pi over 2, which simplifies to 2 pi. So the same position, which would be 0 radians if I didn't move anywhere, is called 2 pi if I go all the way around and back. Now let's deal with all the multiples of pi over 3. This terminal ray is at 1 pi over 3, so this terminal ray will be at 2 pi over 3. This terminal ray will be at 3 pi over 3, but again that reduces down to just pi. The next terminal ray will be at 4 pi over 3. This terminal ray is at 5 pi over 3, which brings us back to this terminal ray, which would be 6 pi over 3, which does reduce down to 2 pi. I've highlighted all of the multiples of pi over 4 in purple, but this time let's focus only on the ones that we are missing. Since we are looking for multiples of pi over 4, a shortcut is to think of pi, which is right here, as 4 pi over 4. Then, one step before that will be 3 pi over 4, and one multiple of pi over 4 after that will be 5 pi over 4. Similarly, if we think of 2 pi as 8 pi over 4, we know that one multiple before that will be 7 pi over 4. This first angle is an angle with measure pi over 6 in standard position, and I've highlighted all of the multiples of pi over 6 in orange. However, let's just focus on the few that are missing. Since we are looking for multiples of pi over 6, the trick is to think of pi as 6 pi over 6 and 2 pi as 12 pi over 6. In that case, one multiple before 6 pi over 6 will be 5 pi over 6. And one multiple after 6 pi over 6 will be 7 pi over 6. Similarly, since 2 pi is 12 pi over 6, one multiple before 12 pi over 6 will be 11 pi over 6. That's it for example 4. These are all the special angles that we will use throughout this course and into AP Calculus next year. Now let's talk about the value of sine, cosine, and tangent on the unit circle. For a unit circle, the radius is 1. As a result, the sine and cosine values of an angle theta in standard position are simplified. We know that the sine of theta is defined as y over r, the vertical displacement divided by the distance from the origin. However, on the unit circle, the radius is 1, and y over 1 is just y. Memorize this immediately. The sine of an angle is the y-coordinate of the point P on the unit circle. Similarly, we know that the cosine of theta is usually x over r. But on the unit circle, r is 1, so we are just left with the cosine of theta is equal to x. The cosine of the angle theta is just the x-coordinate of the point P when you're on the unit circle. Memorize this now. 
the definition of tangent doesn't really change on the unit circle. We know it to be y over x or sine theta over cosine theta. That doesn't change uh, because it's the unit circle. Example 5. The figure shows a circle centered at the origin with an angle of measure theta in standard position. The terminal ray of the angle intersects the circle at point P. The coordinates of P are 1 half comma radical 3 over 2. Find the following values. Arguably, the most important thing you need to learn about trigonometry is that on the unit circle, a point x comma y is the point cosine theta comma sine theta. So the x value on the unit circle is the value of cosine theta and the y value is the value of sine theta. Therefore the answer to part a sine theta is radical 3 over 2. And the answer to part b cosine theta is 1 half. For part c we need to find tangent theta which we know to be y divided by x. So in this case that is radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. When you divide two fractions you multiply by the reciprocal. So this will equal radical 3 over 2 times 2 over 1. The 2's cancel each other out and we are left with simply radical 3. So that is the tangent of theta. Back at the first step, a shortcut would be to realize that we have a 2 in both denominators. So these will cancel each other out, leaving you with radical 3 over 1, which immediately gives you the radical 3. Example 6. The point R is the result after point P is reflected over the y-axis. Let alpha be the angle in standard position whose terminal ray intersects the circle above at point R. Find the following values. Point R is the result of reflecting point P over the y-axis. Therefore, the horizontal displacement will be the opposite of the horizontal displacement of point P. So point R will have an x-coordinate of negative one-half. The vertical displacement will be the same as the vertical displacement of point P. Both of these points are at the same height. So the y-value of point R will be radical 3 over 2. So these are the coordinates of point R. Point R is still on the unit circle, so the sine of alpha will just be the y-value radical 3 over 2. The cosine of alpha will just be the x value, negative 1 half. Tangent alpha will be the y value divided by the x value. If you notice it, you can use a shortcut. The denominators are the same, so when you divide the y value by the x value, the denominators are going to cancel out. So you're going to end up with just radical 3 divided by negative 1, which is simply negative radical 3. If you don't notice the shortcut, you can just do it the long way. The y value divided by the x value. And when you divide two fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. So this is radical 3 over 2 times negative 2 over 1. The 2's cancel each other out, and we are left with negative radical 3, just like we thought. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.